everyone welcome back to PJ's cake class today we are gonna talk about how to model a feather I have this question from one of my subscriber from my youtube channel a PJ chain design and um, was asking how to model a feather so I'm assuming that is for the jury purpose so today that's what we're going to talk about it let's get started we are going to model one is flat like the silver one right here and the one with the curvature um, to do that we need to starting to trace an image so what we do is we will find an image from mr google with any of the feather you like and we will trace with background bitmap command and then we will use the curve tool to trace it um, with the curve and once we have it we'll extrude it to make it into solid once we finish that we want it everywhere is nice and rounded so we want to use uh, radius fillet and then to make it into a desirable thickness we'll use cage edit after that if you feel like you wanted to have an overall curvature we'll use flow along the surface okay let's bring an image from mr google after you find an image you want to type it on the command bar for background bitmap and then you want to place the image in there i have a feather image that i found and i just simply draw a square to show that image now you can trace as detail as you want it but when you try to do the fillet the edges you might have a problem so I will just simply to trace in general outline and if it doesn't 100% fit it's okay we can always turn on the control point and then we will edit it so let's just trace a, a outline there okay and with the point that with the two curve like this one and the other one on the other side let's turn on the control point you can use a hotkey F10 or you can click on the icon here and then that allow you to um, to edit this control point I just turn on my gumball so I can easily to edit by dragging the arrow To get it fit we want to be more realistic by this negative space so what i do is i will draw some of the shape like this and use the trim tool to cut it off and you can do as detailed as you want it in this demonstration i'm just gonna have few of them just give you an idea of what you can do here all right now I'm going to turn the background off by using again big background bitmap and then right here visible equal no so they will be gone there oh before I do that I need another curve for this center one okay so I'm going to background bitmap and I'm gonna turn it off so this is what you will see there all I need to do now is to select all the curve and I will trim it whatever I don't need it like that then we have those online just go ahead and join them while they are select so this is our curve okay so this is our curve and I just go ahead and trace again because the one I did was pretty ugly um, let's go take a look on the perspective so the key is if I have this curve and I have them um, extruded straight up they look really stiff this is not what we wanted to have so if ideally I can have something in the middle it's a little bit puffy 
to the edge is a more like a knife edge that will look more realistic and that will look nicer for the jewelry purpose but how can we make that happen i'm going to show you different way and that i tried and it doesn't work uh, the reason i want to show you this is because you may end up you know some, with some experience like that and then you don't like that and you don't know what to do because I experienced that too. So I want to show you how I solve the problem. So this profile showing us, like let's look at, look at the perspective, this profile showing us, we want to have something a little bit nicer, you know, taper it to the edge and the middle is a little bit fat. The first idea I came up is slip two. So I go ahead to have this curve and I go ahead and split with the point on this point here and the one at the very end. So right there. So now I have two curves. If I go ahead to use the sweep, sweep two, living under the surface, sweep two rail. So you'll choose, this is uh, rail one, rail two. You wanna starting with this point, go into the middle with this curve and you want to end it at this point right here. It looks perfect, but let's take a look. You have this folding right there, and this is not what we want. And I also try another command is called um, curve network. Sometimes it works, but the problem is the rail that we have is going kind of going in, coming out, so it won't have an ideal, you know, the surface. So this is the solution that I come up with. Um, I join back with those two curves and I did it the profile that I have there. The step is going to make it solid first. So I have this curve. I'm going to extrude a planar curve straight. Choose this curve, hit enter. And the distance, I wanted to, them to be like 1.5 millimeters. So it's like 0.75 which is I wanted to extrude it on the both side and make sure it's solid equal yes so I have this very thick looking and let me turn them into the ghost view very thick looking leaf but we wanted to have the edge is a little bit more like a knife edge or thinner if we have um, Z brush it will be really sculpting looking or if we use the um, T-spline, that will work too. However, we want to use a Rhino to build everything, right? So this is what we have first. The first idea of thinking, maybe I'll make it rounder, so it will look nicer. So we're gonna use a uh, radius fillet. Uh, set it up roughly about, let's see, 0.3 maybe too big, let me try. It is too big. Uh, sometimes if you have a too big of a radius compared to the the um, curve that you have there, you got some extra bonus here. But we don't need this bonus. So let's do one more time. Let me set it much smaller. Let's say 0.1. And then we want to select everything again. Okay, it is nice. If we are going to print this, I always suggest uh, people to check on the naked edges all the time because you don't want to wait till you finish a model and you cannot fix it if you have a naked edges. So we check on the edge ana an analysis and check there's no naked edge on our command bar here. Perfect. All right. So now how are we going to make it puffy in the middle and is a knife edge. We're going to use the command. It's called cage edit. All right. So with this pick and then you type it cage edit and then you want to pick on the bounding box. All right. Nothing happened. It's okay. Coordinate, coordinate system. We want to make sure it's to the wall and we click enter. And here's the something that you can custom. In the preset, you have 4x, 4y, and 4z. 
I want to able to X want to have a lot control point on the X and Y so I'm going to type it here for maybe 10 and Y count a uh, point count maybe 10 and Z is okay to stay in the fold. And I'm going to show you just in a second for what that means. After you click it, you're going to see there's a box coming out. And you click one more time on the enter. You're going to have this control point showing up. What are they is I'm going to go back with all four view. And let's take a look. I'm going to select the bottom three on the top view. Okay. And I'm going to enlarge in my perspective. And right at the scaling tool, I'm going to scale it down. So that bring down the edge like this. And then you can go ahead and pick up like certain point. Let's say I wanted to have bottom right here to be very narrow. And now I'm looking in the right view is kind of kind of pinch them. And then so you're going to go ahead, uh, pinch here, pinch there. I'm going to pick those three. And again, go into the perspective. And I'm going to pinch in like this. Okay. Maybe that blue color is not a good color for you to see. Uh, let me change into a greenish color. So that way you will see better. Okay. And then like this right here, I'm going to pick up those and kind of pinch them. All right. And you can do a lot more editing if you want to. Now I'm going to go on the top view again. This time I want to pick up somewhere in the middle, maybe uh, this few guys right here. And then I want to go into the uh, either front view or the right view. I'm going to go them to make them puffier. Okay. And then you can kind of drag, and pull, do whatever you want it to make it look nicer. Okay. Now, once you're done, you hit escape key and then you can delete the box if you no longer need it. So now we have the body. Let's take a render view. So now you have the body somehow similar like this. Okay, now with the center, I can simply have this one and the curve in the center. I can uh, simply just pipe it. Um, not really particular in any type of diameter. I'm here just want to uh, kind of eyeball it into a pipe. All right, whoa, look fat, but it's a demonstration. We're going to have it up a little bit. So now we have some sort of leaf things there. Uh, now I have this feather. And how do we going to make it curve? There are two ways to do it. You could go into the front view. And you're kind of uh, using the bend tool. Uh, it's living under the transform and you have bend. Um, you can set it up like this way. Go into the front view, you pick out the object and set where is the center and you kind of bend it this way, um, bend it that way. And you can, let's take a look on the perspective and you can have a feather something like this. All right, if that worked for you, that that's fine. Uh, let's go back. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, uh, we can have other way. We can go into again to the front view and I'm going to draw a curve of how my leaf is going to be. And again, you can turn on the control point to make it more curve here. It's going to be up like this. I'm sorry, it's a feather, not a leaf, but the leaf work with the same way. Okay. All right. So we have a curve here. Let me go ahead to extrude it, this surface curve into the surface. So we have something look like this. As long as you can cover the area for that um, leaf on the, not the feather on the top view, they will look fine. All right. So next step, um, 
we're going to do is going to the curve you have the curve from the object and you want to create UV curve okay you pick up this surface creating UV curve I'm going to bring this surface here so it's not bother you now if you look at the perspective you probably see this curve over there we're going to um, surface from a planar curve and we just make it into the surface what it does this is will be a reference surface for our feather here I'm gonna move my feather here that kind of give you the idea of where the position is if I have my feather more close to here it will end up to more close to right side of this curved surface it also tell you how to, you know how to how what's the distance if you set up your distance like this it will be a little bit higher not touching that so that basically this is a reference okay now what we like to do um, is I wanted to have recall history so it's easier for me to move around and to see the different position so here's what we do recall history first then you go to the transform then you will see this flow along the surface you click on the object enter you click on one of the corner of this surface reference surface then you go to the target surface you click on that corner as well and it might take some time depends how complicated form that you have now we have the feather there and good thing about the gum, uh, recorder history is if I move there, it will move along with that surface. So if I all of a sudden decided I want to actually curve bump up instead of going in, and with the record history, it helps you to do that. Okay, so once I like it, you know, I can delete the surface, and that will be our feather. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you on my other video. If you have any other questions regarding how to model and um, you have difficult time, please feel free to contact me on my YouTube channel or on my Facebook page. I would love to share my experience with you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my other video.